Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insights into the worlds of literature for both those who do read and those who don't. Guess who's back? King is back with a book more grounded than that of his earlier work but still just as tantalising on the senses. Today I'm reviewing Billy Summers by Stephen King. Stephen King. Do you know him? You most likely do. And if you don't, you've probably seen his work reimagined on the big screen. It's not often I need to gloss over author introductions. Sometimes I do admittedly forget to say anything at all. My apologies. But Stephen King is the man who really needs no introduction. He's been writing now for many decades and despite being 73 years old at the making of this video, he's still very much full steam ahead for what I imagine is every hour of every day and that's a fantastic thing indeed because Mr King is quite the wordsmith but is he fit to hold that title still? Well let's dive in. Billy Summers tells the tale of a hitman named Billy Summers. Despite being a man who is a hired killer, Billy likes to find morality even in the darkest of professions. To do this, he only ever takes on contracts for people who are bad, persons who have committed the most heinous of crimes. As Billy says, bad people need to pay a price, and the price must be high. He's reluctant to take on one more job, as things just don't feel at all right. But with the promise of a big payday, Billy adopts a new identity as a writer named David Lockridge, and finds a lot more than he could bargain for, both in his newfound and unexpected love of writing and in the hit that he can't help but feel very uneasy about. That is the basic rundown of the plot, although there is far more going on. For spoiler purposes, I can't talk about that, but that is the basic. This is a very new book, so I won't delve in any deeper because I would like you to pick this up. The first half of this book it goes by rather steadily. There are a wealth of characters and even two different personas for the main character. Stephen King certainly knows the cliche he's writing about here and often mentions it through his own character's narration. This is the classic story of one last job before I retire and along with it all the foreboding feelings that something is surely to go wrong. The first half of this book doesn't doesn't offer anything particularly new, although it certainly catches your attention. And that's very important, for there is a deeper narrative within this tale, and it's one you feel pressed to uncover. It's a mystery that has a dozen moving pieces, and slowly as you progress, each new piece is revealed in front of you. It's both satisfying and addictive. King writes his characters very convincingly, particularly in this work, that's not ignored at all. He captures the regret and conflict of his lead protagonist, Billy Summers, quite expertly. Through Billy's own writing, you learn deeper of his past, and this is expanded as the pages pass you by. King also makes you feel rather conflicted yourself. Despite reading the tales of a hitman, you also see the compassion of a person who is trying to do good by doing wrong. Billy isn't so much an evil person, but he is a bad one, instilling justice through his own means and his own determination of guilt. He is the classic vigilante. You know he's acting outside of the law, and you know deep down inside that the world would not work if everyone just took justice into their own hands, but you still have to admire Billy's dedication to what he thinks is right. It's a moral conflict, and one Stephen King is certainly aware of. The emotional depth to Billy and his display of intelligence strongly suggests Billy himself is aware too, but far too gone to do anything about it. Billy almost knows a storm is coming, but he can't help himself and is intently driven to avenge those who have wronged him and anyone close to him. This is not a classic Stephen King book. I must make any potential readers aware of that. For me, that is slightly disappointing, but it, in no way a critique. 
I love Stephen King where the weird and mysterious is all at play, but aside from one minor reference, you won't find that in this work. While this may not be to every fan's taste, it in no way discredits the achievement in this book. King does seem to be leaning more and more to crime thrillers in his later years, although of course he still does dabble in the darker side of things. And while he may not bring about the same level of horror and creepiness he is known for, what certainly isn't lost is his ability to write a compelling and gripping tale, married with characters that are deep and complex, and with you all the way through good and bad, happiness and despair. It really is a feeling few authors can create, and despite my doubts at the start of this book, throughout the first half particularly, I was quickly silenced and left to experience a wealth of emotion. This ever reminded me of why it is I read in the first place. This was a book that had me on the edge. It was a crime thriller written very, very well. And it was Stephen King flexing his writing muscles once more. I can certainly confirm the man has still got it. Every book review I do of his new works, this is the case. And so with all things considered, I would rate this new book, Billy Summers, a 91 out of 100. And I would certainly recommend it to you, even if you're not a fan, if you're into more stuff that isn't quite as dark um, as earlier stuff by Stephen King, or you may have seen potential films in cinema, such as It or The Shining. This is kind of the opposite of that. There is a little bit of brutality, but it's not going into the horror category or the psychological horror category. It's sticking there with crime thriller, and it really is a great read that really did surprise me the more I went on with it. The last book I reviewed by Mr. King was Cujo, and so I'm glad I read this one after. If you did watch that review um, of Cujo, I'm sure you'll be aware that I was rather disappointed. Uh, this was a book that, in, in the repertoire of Stephen King, just wasn't that great. It was still a good book, but in the repertoire of Stephen King, it wasn't that great, and I was quite disappointed. This book, Billy Summers, has really got me back on the Stephen King wagon, we'll say. It's got me excited to read more of his works because it really has reminded me just how great they can be um, and how enjoyable they are. The next book, if you'd like to read it with me, which will be coming, well, I'll be doing a review in about two weeks, although this book's a little bit shorter. I'm going to be reviewing The Man in the High Castle. Um, so if you'd like to join me, um, in reading that and then coming back here for that review, please pick up a copy. Um, the author's name has actually forgotten me, has left me. Uh, trying to see if the book's around. It's Philip K. Dick, I think. I hope that's right, but I'll be picking that one up and giving that a read. That's a science fiction book um, where you may have seen the TV series on Amazon. It's a science fiction book where we're set in an alternate world where Nazi Germany has actually won the war. And I believe it's set in America, but I don't know much more than that. I've not watched the TV series myself, but the idea certainly seems like a great premise for a book. So if you want to read along with me, make sure to pick up a copy of that book. And I will see you here again soon for another book review. I thank you very much for all of the support. I thank you for taking a little bit of your time to watch this video and happy reading. I will see you again here soon. Bye-bye.